1976, at the end of its exploration mission, our Martian moon probe was left in an eccentric orbit of Mars. Low on fuel, but in a resonant trajectory with Phobos and Deimos, perpetually flying close enough to both rocks to predictably monitor and study its geographical and orbital characteristics for many years to come. On its first pass of Deimos, a geographical anomaly was discovered that puzzled scientists, worried conspiracy theorists, and inspired both to jump to many different conclusions about its unknown origin. A great spire, as tall as a skyscraper on Earth, stood defiantly above the rippled terrain beneath. Seemingly impossibly out of place, the anomaly would be considered a radar mapping miscalculation in a heartbeat if it weren't for the undeniable proof of visual observation. Questions? That there are many. Answers? There are none. Welcome back to Realism Overhaul, by the way. Now, this is a year after the Deep Plot mission discovered that giant spire on Deimos. 1977, I believe, is when we're launching these missions. So in the 19, I think it was 1975 that we launched the first three out to Mars, and that had three missions. Deep Plot was meant to land on Phobos, explore around, and then make its way to Deimos and explore around even more, but it ran out of fuel. But it was still able to fly past Deimos and discover that giant spire, which was kind of spooky. Now, in all reality, it is just a terrain glitch. I think it's a single pixel that is just extremely high, <laughs> like altitude, like glitched, on the pole of Deimos. Um, and that is something that RSS just hasn't fixed, or for whatever reason, it's just happening in my game. It's like the inverted mohole of KSP. I'm actually interested to see if there are anything else like this in the solar system for us to discover. And of course, we'll probably make it all creepy like again. Uh, but yeah, the intro footage, that was all just the flyby footage from Deeplop itself. And now we've launched three more missions in 77, like I mentioned. Now, the other two missions that we launched in 75 was Echo, attempting to land on the surface of Mars, and four relay satellites. And well, the other two missions failed, so we're pretty much sending copies of them slightly modified. Now, what we saw there was our mission plan for Stardust, which we're pretty much just following the Stardust mission on its way to Mars, and once it gets to Mars, you know, what you probably maybe noticed from that small segment of the trajectory being on screen was that we have several burns to actually reach our target. You can see here, firstly, we're capturing into an eccentric orbit of Mars, and that gives us enough time to also capture our two satellites that are going to be basically providing relay communications in a polar orbit of Mars. Now, in 75, we tried to launch four of them, and we just didn't have enough fuel because I had to do a crazy uh, inclination change on the way. We don't have to do that anymore, and I also made the payload way less by giving us only two satellites, and I accidentally made the solar panels for these satellites backwards, because of where Mars is, you want the solar panels and communication dishes facing the same way, but I neglected to do this. Aesthetic mistakes aside, both satellites are operational and in a high polar orbit of Mars, and they'll take some time to spread out. Now back to Stardust, since we gave us time to capture that mission, we have a little while before Echo 2 arrives, which is plenty of time to complete this mission. Of course, falling down to Deimos after pretty much stopping 
uh, rendezvousing with the moon, if you will. The gravity is so low that you can't capture into orbit very well, but you can pretty much rendezvous with it. And of course, we're falling right on the North Pole where that giant spike resides. <laughs> Now, orbital speed is probably maybe 4 to 5 meters per second, so you really don't need hardly anything to fly around on this world, which is always fun. Low gravity worlds are very fun. <laughs> and this anomaly at the pole is just, is just massive. And what we do at first is descend to sort of just above the surface, fly past the massive spire, and find a flat place to land. And that is because we have something else to deploy here. <laughs> That's right, we're not just sending this tiny lander. We have something else which is a little bit uh, unorthodox for such a low gravity world. But we have another spacecraft underneath this tiny one. That's right, wheels deploy. We have a technically rover. <laughs> now, these look like the uh, they look like they're just aircraft landing gear, and I think in all reality they technically are. But the reason I took these instead of small rover type wheels is I have an issue with rover type wheels in my game. I place them down on a part, and if I load the vessel again, well, the rover wheels move on their own every time, slightly down, slightly outward from the center. So we use this one, and consequently, these wheels do have motors. So they are able to row perfectly fine. The, the problem is they have absolutely no traction on this world. So the motors are practically useless. I discovered this early on in testing. And so we added all these RCS port system. I wanted to do this just to keep stability, but in all reality, the RCS ports are what allow us to move around, and the landing gear allows us to basically ice skate on the surface of Deimos. <laughs> of course you see here, I had to go jump on the spire, travel all the way up it, try to spin like a top at the, at the top, and drive all the way back down. I Drive in quotations. We're ice skating. We're more closely related to just flying around, but driving this little rover was quite fun um, and we discovered all sorts of science. Now for whatever reason in my game Deimos has only a single biome so there's no point in hopping around. We landed here to do all the science and our mission is pretty much complete. Now we shift our focus over to the final Mars mission of the 1977 transfer window. And all of this is happening about a year later in 1978, by the way. This mission is Echo 2. Now, on the first attempt of Echo, we actually didn't see what was underneath the aero shell because it was meant to stay on for the entire entry into the Martian atmosphere, but I accidentally staged off the aero shell during liftoff. So we get to see it anyway. I'm, I'm hoping we keep stability and luckily it looks like we do. Uh, so nothing burns off uh, from not having that aero shell attached. So luckily all is well and we get to actually see the craft before anything inevitably goes wrong or goes well. Although this time there is a huge difference between Echo 2 and Echo 1 and that is we have line of sight with Earth during the descent, so I don't have to rely on a KOS script, even though everything would have went nominally with that script had I wrote, had I written radar altitude instead of sea level altitude on accident. But as you can see here, we aimed for a periareon of about 30 kilometers or so, and that gave us ample time to deploy parachutes and safely descend to the surface of Mars for the first time utilizing airbags to ensure that we don't blow anything up. Now this is able to collect plenty of science, but is unable to traverse across the surface of course. So next Mars window, or maybe one in the future, we'll be looking to send rovers. 
Uh, but that is this mission completes. All of our Mars missions were extremely successful this window, which is fantastic news considering the last failures that have occurred. Now with the news that Echo 2 has landed on the surface of Mars, let's focus our attention back to the rover on Deimos. Stardust's rover is feeling a little restless and also wants to take a look at Mars as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, there's plenty more videos like this to come. Plenty more videos not like this to come, who knows? But our exploration into the solar system is ever closer to crewed flights, and that's gonna be exciting. So yeah, thanks, and peace out.